Hello, everybody. Hey, all It's Whitney Nicely, and I have had a little bit of technical trouble. I couldn't figure out how to get the live going from what I scheduled. So, anyway, we're all good. We're all here. It's fine. Uh, I want you to share this video, okay? Share this video on your personal page. Share it in your group. Share it on your page. Share this video because there are so many people getting into wholesaling for all of the wrong reasons all the wrong reasons and this video is gonna tell you why wholesaling doesn't work alright so share this go to facebook.com slash coach Whitney nicely and like it I'm trying to reach 4,000 people in 40 Facebook live videos so y'all help me as much as you can and share 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 all the good information sharing is caring alright so let's talk about wholesaling and I've got some notes over here, so if I look over here, I'm just looking at my notes. Wholesaling is a buzzword in real estate. It's how a lot of people get into no money down, no credit needed, no banks. All of that stuff, a lot of times, equals wholesaling. A lot of bandit signs that you see out on the roads that say, I buy houses, I buy ugly houses, I buy houses cash, I buy houses fast. A lot of those are wholesalers. A lot of the postcards that you get in the mail when you're a landlord or when you have empty properties are from wholesalers. Like, there are lots and lots and lots of real estate wholesalers. There's lots of people who want to be wholesalers. So what is wholesaling and what is a wholesaler? Wholesaling is when you go to a seller's house and you've got a formula that you're going by and you're trying to get the price of the house down as far as you can so that you can put your wholesale fee on top of it and sell this contract to an investor or a flipper so that they can put their money in it, repair the house, and sell it at the retail market. All right. Just like if you have a friend that wholesales groceries or you have a friend that wholesales diamonds or you have a friend and they wholesale cars. All right. You're buying it at just a little bit over cost. You're buying it at the absolute bottom dollar. But when you're wholesaling, you're going out and you're getting a contract to buy this property, but you're going to sell that contract. To somebody else you're gonna sell it to a flipper you're gonna sell it to an investor you're gonna get rid of it you're not actually gonna take title to the house and I have a problem with that because a lot of wholesalers feel like they are real estate investors but if you're not buying the house if you're gonna give this contract to an investor and a flipper and they're going to invest and they're going to flip the property then they are the real estate investor you are a wholesaler so wholesaling is going in and making offers making lowball cash close quickly offers on a house and I got five reasons that that is no good like not good at all pretty bad actually all right so the first one is what if you go to look at a house with a seller and they would love to get rid of their property but they owe more than what your wholesale offer is how are you gonna help these people you go in and you're advertising all over town that you buy houses any condition any price any time but really you don't want those sellers because they owe way more than you can wholesale it for and I don't like those ads and I don't know what you do with those leads I mean that's a really good lead here's somebody who wants to sell their house and maybe it's got equity in it maybe it doesn't need any repairs but based on your formula, you can't do anything with this lead because it doesn't fit your wholesale price so that you can make some money so that somebody else can come in and make more money and sell it. It doesn't work. Wholesaling, I say this all the time, when you're a wholesaler, you're basically a one-trick pony. You have one opportunity to go in there, 
give somebody an offer, which is usually a low ball offer, and they feel like you're still in the house. And if they won't take that low, low offer, you're done. It's a dead lead. And you're not actually helping your seller because they do need to get rid of this property. And you said you buy houses in any condition and any price. Well, turns out you don't. <laughs> One, because you're not a real estate investor. And two, because you don't know what to do with the house when they owe what it's worth, or they owe almost what it's worth. You're a one-trick pony. And I have friends that are wholesalers, and I know lots of people that make lots of big money wholesaling, but it's not for me. I'm not a wholesaler. I don't like it. it but that's reason number five. Okay, so the second reason that I don't like wholesaling is what if you have a seller and they are older and they've had this house free and clear and let's say that they are on a fixed income and they have been for 10 or 15 or 20 years well if they have been filing their taxes for one amount and then you come in and you give them a hundred thousand dollars and it bumps them up in their tax bracket and then they have to pay all these other taxes and then they've had this this flaw because they've been making you know, thirty or forty thousand, and then one year they made a hundred and fifty thousand, and then they come back down. That can completely throw them for a loop on their taxes, not just this year, but next year. It could throw them into a whole different bracket. It could be that they had to pay way more taxes than that what they were planning on doing. Are you? Are, I mean, are you okay with that? Are they okay with that? Because a lot of people, when they're on a fixed income, they're very protective because if they make more than what they are allowed to make on that fixed income, they could lose their benefits. And I'm not an accountant. And there's probably a way that accountants know how to deal with this. But a lot of times, there's a reason that people have that sellers have where they don't really want a big lump sum of cash to come at them fast and furious. And, you know, if you're offering them ten or twenty thousand dollars, maybe that's not enough to screw up their tax bracket. But maybe it is. Maybe that's the bubble that they're on. And there's other ways that we can buy this house and not have to have all these other weird implications. I don't want anybody to lose their Social Security benefits just because I gave them a bunch of money. And ask your accountant about that. But I do know that if somebody gets a big lump of money, a lot of times it's very tempting to spend it, to waste it, to go buy TVs and cars and crap and turn around and not have anything to show for it. So that's my second reason I don't like wholesaling. Third reason that I don't like wholesaling is sometimes these people, let's say again, let's say somebody inherited a house. I talked to a lady last week actually and she'd inherited a house that her grandma had given her last year. Grandma had passed. They went through probate and she ended up being able to sell the house for $150,000. That's great, but she had an asset. She had a house. If somebody had offered her maybe more money, she could have made more money. Or if she'd been able to hold the house, maybe she could have pulled a line of credit out on it. Maybe she could have used it to be a private money partner. Maybe she could have used that house to do a lease option so that she would still own the house and be making monthly money coming in. But wholesalers don't think about that. Wholesalers go in and they get the bottom price that we can get it for and they flip it, they turn and burn it, and they move on just as fast as they can. They don't think about the long term, what would be best for their seller and what would be best for them. Now, some sellers have it in their mind that they don't want cash and they want it now and the wholesaler is just there to help them do that. That's fine, I got that. But I don't 
don't like being a one-trick pony. I like to help sellers. The more I can help sellers make more money, the more likely they are to recommend me to somebody else so that I can make money on that deal and on the next deal and on the next deal. All right, that opens up a whole pipeline of people who are going to be calling me. If I can get you more money than what everybody else is getting, don't you think you want to play with me? Mm-hmm. Thought so. So what if you come in and let's say that uh, this lady had inherited a house and the wholesale fee on it was 50000 I'm sorry, the, the ARB on it was 50000 and the wholesale fee was only going to be like 15000 that means her whole inheritance is going to boil down to fifteen thousand dollars. But what if she had twenty or twenty-five thousand dollars in student loans, and she needed that much money to pay off her debts? Because that's what she inherited the house for. Her grandma was trying to help her pay off her student loans, or maybe she had a whole bunch of credit cards, and she was going to try to use that house to pay that off. Well, if you're offering a $15,000 wholesale fee or a wholesale offer on it, she's not going to make enough money to be able to pay off her debts. On the flip side of that, if she needed to get rid of this house and say she found another house that she wanted to move into, but she needed twenty dollars or $30,000 to be able to move into that house, why would she sell to you? Because now she's still got to come up with most of the money so she could buy her other house. Her grandma gave her this house as an inheritance to help her out in life, not so that she could take the bottom dollar and still struggle. So wholesaling doesn't work because sometimes your sellers need the money to pay off old debts. Sometimes they need the money to buy a new house or to, I, I bought a house one time from a guy, he was selling me the house for exactly how much it was going to cost him to buy a new truck for his business. And if I would given him, you know, this low ball wholesale fee, maybe he wouldn't have dealt with me because he needed the money to buy, buy a new truck for his business. I don't like wholesaling. It doesn't work for me. Okay? Okay, the fourth reason I don't like it is because it's almost, wholesaling is almost just like agenting, except you don't have a license. When you wholesale or when you have a real estate license, you are always hustling. You are always looking for that next seller. You are always looking for that next buyer. You are always trying to find people with private money. You are always trying to find somebody who will take a low dollar amount. You are always trying to find somebody who will go for a little bit of nothing and let you have their house. And that's a really hard sell. That's a really hard sell. And... It just doesn't work. And the amount of energy you have to put into marketing and looking at houses and making offers, I mean, it's insane. I hear wholesalers talking about calling two or three hundred people a day. I don't talk to two or three hundred people a month. They're calling two or three hundred people every single day to make sure that their pipeline is full, to make sure that somebody will give them a wholesale contract on that house. Y'all are working entirely too hard. Agents and wholesalers are working entirely too hard. And the moment an agent and a wholesaler leaves the closing table, they have to go right back out and start pounding the pavement and finding another deal. It's not any fun. The whole point of real estate investing is so that you don't have to work so hard. If you're going to be working and working and working, I mean, I know some wholesalers that could make more money at a nine to five. They wouldn't have the same freedom, but they'd have benefits. I just don't get it. Wholesaling, wholesalers, they work entirely too hard. Calling, cold calling, 200 to 300 people a day is working entirely too hard. And that brings me up to our fifth, my fifth problem with wholesaling. 
There are so many problems with closing on wholesale deals. And it could be that the problem is with the seller. Because maybe the seller has a bad title, or maybe there was a IRS lien, or a mechanics lien, or uh, some other kind of lien on the property. Maybe it's there's taxes owed, and maybe they weren't completely truthful with you on that. And then we come up to closing, the day or two before closing, and we can't get a clear title? Well, that's a disaster. Because on the other side of it, now our investors think that we've set them up for failure because we promised them a clear title and now here we are 24 hours before closing and we don't have a clear title that's not good guys that does not look good for your name your business and any future deals you might be doing and I understand that that's out of your control and that the seller should have warned you and that you can take steps to make sure that's not gonna happen but still it's gonna happen there's going to be some problems with the sellers. Maybe uh, there's another heir that we didn't know about. Maybe there's another sibling somewhere. Maybe there's a half-sibling that daddy never admitted to or, you know, something somewhere. There's going to be a problem. But it can also have a problem with the buyers. I've seen lots of wholesalers, I mean, sweating bullets the two, three, four days a week before closing because maybe their buyers found another deal that was better and so they backed out on your deal and they've gone to buy the other deal now your money is gone or you've got your buyer you're wholesaling it to your buyer what happens when they get the HUD statement and they see how much you're making and they're like oh no I'm not paying you that you can either take half take less or I'm not buying it well then what did you do all this work for what if their funding falls through that's the other thing that I see a lot with wholesalers. There's uh, daisy chains. So this wholesaler got the contract, and then they called this wholesaler, and they called this wholesaler, and they called this wholesaler, and this one, the fourth one down the line, actually has the buyer. But that means that this one, this one, this one, and this one all expect to get paid. If it was only a two or three or four thousand dollar wholesale fee, that means you did all the work to find the seller. And all these other people are going to get paid, probably as much as you are. So now you got to work twice as hard to get the sellers and get the good quality buyers who are going to actually fund this deal on closing day. Holy crap, I am way too much of a control freak to have all these people in my line who may or may not want to get paid. Like, I can't stand it. Oh my gosh, I can't stand it. I am not a wholesaler. I would be a terrible wholesaler. And maybe it's because I'm lazy. I don't want to have to go out and hustle. I don't want to talk to two or three hundred people a day. I don't want to talk to two or three hundred people a month. Wholesalers and agents work entirely too hard. I have a life to live and wholesaling and regular agenting does not fit into the lifestyle that I want. <laughs> Y'all share this video. I've got a couple people watching it. Go ahead and hit the share button. And if you're watching on the replay, make sure you go to facebook.com slash coach Whitney Nicely. I'm doing 40 Facebook lives in 40 days to reach 4,000 people. So you have to share it so that I can get my message out so I can get all the people to realize that wholesaling is not the end all be all in real estate investing. <laughs> One thing that I got to tell you too. Not only are you a one-trick pony when you're a wholesaler, because you only have one option. You have to be hustling. You have to be closing. You have to be given those low-ball offers. Like, you don't know another way to help a seller except here, take this bottom dollar offer, and if you don't, good luck. You have to hustle. You have to talk to tons and tons and tons of people all the time. All the time, you never get to take a break. You take a break, and your competition is going to swoop in and take it. That is no fun. You can't take a vacation because if you take a day off, your leads are going to dry up to nothing. You had this ball rolling, you were snowballing, you had all sorts of deals coming through your pipeline. Whew. You also, when you're wholesaling, I know lots of wholesalers that they've got. 
two or three, four people helping them. They got somebody on the leads, they got somebody on the phone, they got boots on the ground going to look at the houses, then they've got a closer. I'm a one woman show, y'all. When I buy houses, my leads come in to me, I analyze them, I go look at the houses, I make the offers, I close them. That way I get to keep all the money. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here, guys. I don't want a daisy chain. I don't want to have to pay a whole lot of people. I want the money. But I want the monthly money. See, that's the other thing that wholesalers miss out on. They may have one closing this month and one closing next month and two closings the next month. But then they may go three or four or eight months with no closings. That's scary. That's very scary. You can't live if you don't have any money coming in. It takes money to live. It takes money to tithe. It takes money to eat. It takes money to invest. You have to have some money coming in. And wholesalers don't ever get that money coming in. All right, let me tell you about my first wholesale deal. Y'all share this video. My very first wholesale deal was actually on apartments. On apartments. Uh, and it was a disaster. From the first time that woman called me, I offered her twenty-five thousand. I think she had ten units in a house. I offered her twenty-five thousand, and she was like, "No way! It's totally worth a hundred thousand." I was like, "You're crazy! Bye." She was crazy. It was completely empty, completely vacant in the wrong part of town like it was a disaster so she called me back about a week later and she was like okay I'll take your 25,000 for those apartments and I was like no now I don't want to give you 25,000 I'm only going to give you 15,000 and she was like okay fine I'll take it crap what have I gotten myself into now all right so I took it for 15,000 I put it on the market I couldn't get anybody I could get people to call but I couldn't get anybody to go over there and look at it so I started talking to her a little bit more and it turned out that she was living in Nashville and she just got married and remarried and she needed to get rid of these and then it turned out that she owed back taxes on it and then it turned out that the city had it on the condemned list and those are the kind of houses that you end up working with when you're wholesaling and I don't know about you but I like pretty houses I like pretty neighborhoods I like pretty people all right I don't want to go into a war zone and start offering a little bit of nothing for these houses it's not worth it all right I love my pretty houses I've got some ugly houses too but they're still on like not the scary part of town they're just ugly so this lady was in a terrible situation and she needed I think it came down to like she she had another property that she owed some back taxes on she owed some back taxes on this one it turned out that all in, all done, $10,000, and she paid off the back taxes on it. I had to go get a letter from the city that said that they wouldn't condemn them. They gave me 30 days to get rid of them. So I found somebody on Craigslist who was a wholesaler himself, and he was wanting to come south. He was in Baltimore. He wanted to come south because he heard that we had better deals in the south than he could find in Baltimore. So he found me, and I was advertising him for 15000 still, and he offered me $13,000 to get the deal done. I knew she needed $10,000 to walk away and be done with it. He was willing to give me $13,000. And we had so many problems getting it closed because of the back taxes. Because of she had an ex-husband that could have possibly had a right to the property and to get free title clear title we had to find him and he was in a homeless shelter and oh it was awful and then we had the condemned letter I had to go to the city and get a condemned letter all this stuff that had to happen just so I could get a clear title and I mean I can't tell you probably three times I tried to walk away from this deal because it was just too much stress it was too much activity it was too many moving parts it was awful and y'all this was like last summer like July 2016 like I'd been in real estate and doing lease options for two years before I finally did a wholesale deal and it was not worth it I stayed in the middle 
I actually got paid because that was going to be a problem at one point. Uh, I think my contract expired in the middle of all this stuff, but they still ended up paying me. I made $3,000, and I probably have a gray hair in here somewhere from that. I know I got a wrinkle from that deal. It was a disaster. From beginning to end, it was a disaster. And I don't like wholesaling. Because in my experience, it's just one disaster after another. And, y'all, I spent like six weeks of my life dealing with this woman and dealing with this closing. And I only made $3,000. Usually when I buy houses on lease options, if I'm going to spend six weeks on a deal, I'm making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. Something that it would be worth donating, dedicating six weeks of my time for. $3,000 is pathetic. Some of you are watching this and going, I'll take $3,000 <sighs> for the work, for the headache, for the trouble, for the disasters, but for the lessons I learned, $3,000 wasn't worth it. I would wholeheartedly much rather had processed two or three lease options because I would have made $30,000, $50,000 $50, on each one of those in the same amount of time I wasted on this one wholesale deal just because I wanted to do one wholesale. I don't like wholesaling. It's a buzzword. It's not any fun. And you don't make that monthly money. I like the monthly money. You like the monthly money. My mama raised me to know that money was going to be in the mailbox at the first of the month. You want to raise your kids to know that people are paying us money every month to live in some of our rental houses. Y'all tell me all the time that you want $10,000 a month. $10,000 a month. But you want it in residual income. When I do lease options, I'll get five or ten or $15,000 in a non-refundable option fee. Plus, I'll keep the deal. So I have to work and I'm going to make more than a wholesale deal would be on this. I'm going to make more than what a listing fee would be on this. And I have the opportunity to make money every month for the next five or ten years. And maybe I'll make $200 a month. Maybe I'll make $500 a month. But if I was making $200 a month and I did one deal a month, by the end of the year, I'm making an extra $2,400 a month. And that's on the very low end. On the high end, maybe I can make $500 a month on my lease options, you know, plus my option fees. But $500 a month times 12 months, if I do one deal a month, that's $6,000 a month that I'm getting free and clear. Can I get a, a like? a little heart, a little something on that. I mean, one deal a month. That's not trying to kill yourself. That's not going out and hustling like a crazy person. That's just one deal a month at 500 bucks a month is 6,000. If you do that for two years in a row, you're at $12,000 a month part time. All it takes is 10 to 15 hours a week to get this snowball rolling. You do Two deals, you're going to get there twice as fast. You do three or four deals every month, you might get to 10000 a month in a year. And then you won't need your 9 to 5. And then you will really hate your real estate license. You will see why people want to invest in real estate, but nobody wants to represent first-time homebuyers. I'm talking to you, agents. <laughs> Okay, so I mentioned too that if you're a wholesaler, you're basically a one-trick pony. You only go in and give a low-ball offer and hope and pray they'll accept it. When I go in on a lease option offer, I give three offers on every house. If I wanted to be a regular real estate agent, I would give each seller four different opportunities to work with me. I'd give them the low-ball offer. I'd give them a lease option offer. I'd give them another lease option offer, and then I'd offer to list it. But I would show them 
in four different columns how much money they'd make here, how much money they'd make there, how much here, and how much there. And let your seller decide. Agents are one-trick ponies also, most of the time. Because all they know is to go in, list it, collect 6 to 10 percent, and move on to the next one. It never occurs to them that they could buy it and make money every month so that they have more free time with the kids, so that they can go hang out with their husbands, so that, you know, if you start making $10,000 a month this year, maybe you can talk about bringing your husband home. Maybe you can talk about letting your wife help you some while she's home with the kids. It will change your life to start bringing home 10000 a month, part-time, investing in real estate. I know it will because it changed mine. I went from $2,000 a month to plenty to, so that I can stay home and coach and go buy houses. Um, okay, so... When you're offering sellers, when you're giving them these three or four offers, you're offering them more money. Wholesalers are going for a bottom price. You start giving them the bottom price and then more and then more and then maybe more. They're going to love you. They're going to absolutely love you. And I know they are. And I know I'm telling some good stuff here. So I want you all to go and share this. Okay. Hit the share button and send this out to all your friends so that they can see it later, all right? Wholesaling is not the answer. Giving people three or four opportunities to work with you, giving them more money, giving them more opportunities, that's where the good part of real estate investing comes in. That's the amazing part of real estate investing. And when you start offering more money, your competition dwindles greatly because you're creative. You figured out a way that your sellers get more money and you get to make more money. Your competition has no idea how to do that. So your competition goes down to nothing. You start playing in your own little sandbox of off-market properties. Your sellers start to love you, they start to recommend you, and suddenly you've got more leads than you can handle. <laughs> but that's tomorrow's Facebook Live. Today's Facebook Live is all about wholesaling and why it doesn't work. All right, so just to recap, if you find a seller and they have a mortgage on a property and your wholesale offer is less than their mortgage, they're not going to go with you. All right? But if you're doing lease options, you could. You could buy it for what they owe on it and start making their payments. That way you beat out all the wholesalers. Uh, if they're on a limited income, it may be that they don't really want a big lump sum of cash. And I know that sounds crazy because who doesn't really want a big lump sum of cash? But some people don't. The third thing is that they may need more money to pay down debts or to get into a new investment or just to do all sorts of different things. And if you're offering them the low ball wholesale rate and they need, you know, five or ten or twenty thousand more that's going to eat into your profits and you may not be able to make a deal happen with them. The fourth reason is that when you're wholesaling, when you're doing regular real estate agenting stuff, you are hustling, you are working your tail off, you don't have a break, you're dog paddling, I mean you're gasping for air every single day hoping and praying that this is the day that you get a whole big stream of money Except what happens is you go to closing and you give that stream of money to somebody else. That's no fun, guys. No fun. You need to keep that stream of income. You need to keep that golden goose. You can still buy houses with no money and no credit and not be a wholesaler. You can do it. It's called lease options. Uh, and the fifth reason that I don't like wholesaling is for the closing problems. And whether the closing problems are on the seller's side or on the buyer's side, it's just too much stress. It's too many moving parts. I can't stand it. I'm a control freak. I need to know what's going on. I need to know that we've got this deal done. And I need to know so that I can budget how much money I'm going to be making this month, next month, and six months from now. 
and I can't do that if I'm wholesaling. I'm not a wholesaler. I've only done one wholesale, and wholesaling is a buzzword that people use when they talk about no money, no credit, no banks, but wholesalers, let me just say this too, wholesalers are not real estate investors. I know they think they are, but they're not because they give their deals away to the real investors, to the real flippers. Wholesalers are middlemen, middle women. They're not investors. They're not creating monthly cash flow. They're passing their deals off to investors. And some wholesalers make big money. I see the YouTube commercials too where they're driving their Lamborghinis and they're cashing six-figure checks, but I wonder how many stops on that daisy chain those six figures flow through. Because they don't ever mention that. On mine, the buck stops here. And I don't work my tail off for these deals. I don't do it. I'm not going to do it. Uh, I've only done one wholesale deal. It was on apartments. I only made three grand, and I it's, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. So if you have any questions, if you want to know about lease options, if you want me to rant and rage about wholesaling anymore, I would be glad to. Um, there's five main reasons that I am not a wholesaler. I won't wholesale, and it, it's just not for me. That monthly money is what I want, and the only way I can get those are lease options. If you have any questions, please send me a message on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash coach Whitney nicely, Whitney like Houston, nicely, like nicely done. And send me a message. Let me know. I've got another, I'm doing 40 Facebook Lives in 40 days. And tomorrow we're talking about how to go from no investments to too many deals in your pipeline. So share this video with your friends. Share this video with your family. Share this with everybody you can. I'm trying to reach 4,000 people in the next 40 days and I can only do that if you help me share these videos so that more people will come in, like my page, and we can rock and roll with real estate investing. If you have any questions, please, please, please let me know. Send me a message and maybe we'll keep going and do 45 days of videos or 60 days or whatever. You send me the topic and I'll either let you know which day we're going to be talking about it or we'll just keep rolling with these topics. Let me know what you want to talk about. Let's go make some money. Go buy some houses. And I'll help you the best I can. If you want to get in my program, go to WhitneyNicely.com. I had a gentleman join late last night, Sunday night. And that was an awesome Mother's Day present for me. <laughs> but I know it's going to be a good Mother's Day present for him next year. It's going to be good for his kids next year. It's going to be a great investment for him to be able to buy houses and keep the monthly money so that he can create that generational wealth, so that he can provide and protect for his family. That's the best part of real estate investing. It's fun to talk about, it's, it's fun bragging, but it's an amazing position for you to be able to shift and start handing that to your kids. Start training your kids the way that you wanted to be trained as a kid so that real estate investing is just natural. Y'all let me know if you have any questions. Share this video far and wide or go to facebook.com slash coach Whitney Nicely. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Same time, same place. One o'clock. Bye y'all.